For many, it's the best playground Darwin has to offer and a major draw card for fishing enthusiasts. But Darwin Harbour isn't just growing in popularity for its fishing resources. This weekend, the largest ever LNG tanker will arrive in Darwin and it's a symbol of what lies ahead. As Darwin Harbour develops into a major oil and gas, ha gas hub for the region, the safety of those who use it is drawn into question. So is the time coming for the enforcement of boat licences and registration. It's early morning at East Arm Wharf and a ship full of cargo is loaded and heading for a foreign port. It's just one of 1,500 commercial ships that take cargo in and out of Darwin Harbour every year. Darwin is a busy harbour and it's getting busier. Well, we had over 1,600 um, commercial vessels last year and some 5,550 vessel movements all up um, during the year. So that, that's a lot of movements. Bruce Wilson has been piloting boats like this in Darwin for decades. He ensures tankers make the journey safely by controlling them in and out of the harbour. Because you can do a fishing boat in the morning, then you can jump onto an LNG carrier later on, which is nearly 300 metres long, and then go on to a, a cattle ship. In Darwin, cargo has grown by 400% in the past 15 years. As the city develops into an oil and gas hub, the Territory Government expects that trade from the East Arm Wharf could reach 15 million tonnes by the end of next year. That's almost four times the current tonnage. For impacts when they go online, that will involve a lot more LNG ships and also condensate tankers um, going through the harbour, all of which increases the traffic and all of which means we've got to manage that a lot more carefully. While the big tankers are making their way in and out, thousands of recreational users are also on the water each year. Darwin Harbour represents about 35 to 40 per cent of all recreational fishing in the Northern Territory. While East Arm gets busier, recreational fishers are using the area around the port more and more because of nearby boat ramps. And that concerns the Amateur Fishermen's Association. It just means that many people who want to fish in the area will go through that basin. Um, and that basin is going to be shared with two gas plants, um, a major port, uh, possibly a marine supply base, and uh, who knows what else. Boat pilot Bruce Wilson says inexperienced fishers are at risk. They see a big ship coming along and they don't realise the speed of it until it's on top of them. All these are expired. Are yep. It's an offence to go out in the water with uh, expired flares. But it's unclear just how many people have boats or use the harbour because there's no requirement for boat registration or licences. And we're going through the Gestapo. The boat's sound, the gear's sound. What's going on? OK, let's have a look at just... Because you don't need a licence up here, a lot of people aren't aware of the rules and regulations. I mean, anyone can just go and buy a boat and go out. You know, there's no standard that they have to achieve or to show that they, um, they're at uh, to be able to drive a boat on the harbour or any of the interior waterways. Go back on the water once you get some flares, but you're not going out on the water unless you've got them. You understand, sir? Authorities believe it's only a matter of time before a lack of water safety will lead to a serious accident on Darwin Harbour. I think you'd have to be pretty naive to think that wouldn't happen. In the workplace, on the commercial side of things, we have a, a very uh, risk-averse society or culture. In the public or the uh, recreational area, we have a society that encourages risks. Well, you, you probably only need if you're going more than two miles yeah. off, so if you're in the harbour all day today, you don't really need it, but you've got it. Yeah, fantastic. It's good to see. The harbour master is concerned that untrained and unprepared recreational fishers can drive a boat in Darwin Harbour. A prudent person would make sure that they've got all of the safety equipment on board, that they can keep everyone safe on board and that they've got sufficient knowledge of operating that vessel and of the harbour and what might be happening with large ships and also what to do if something goes wrong in order to keep themselves safe. I, and I just think that's prudent, sensible management. 
we still have significant difficulties on our roads and we have licensing on the roads, so I'm not sure that that's the solution. What is the solution is a significant boat safety awareness program that goes right throughout the Territory and that's linked to the sort of activities that we're going to have in Darwin Harbour. But the Northern Territory Government doesn't believe safety is an issue on Darwin Harbour and it has no plans to enforce fishers to go through any mandatory training before hitting the water. We are the only jurisdiction in Australia. You don't need a licence to fish, you don't need a licence to have a boat and we want to maintain it like that. The Northern Territory Government says an increasingly busy harbour won't prevent the two sectors striking an equal balance. We have nearly 8,000 boats owned by Territorians and most of them are big boats. And people that fish in the harbour, they fish away from the main channel. So it doesn't matter how busy the harbour will be, there's plenty of space for everybody. If you go out on a boat, make sure you've got all the safety gear, make sure you know all the rules and regulations in relation to your boat and where you're operating it in, and um, enjoy the Northern Territory waterways.